The South Kona community met with consultants and state officials over the weekend to discuss the future of Kealakekua Bay State Park. The Department of Land and Natural Resources is seeking input on possible alternatives for a new master plan for the popular park. The updated plan will serve as a guide for the long-term use and management of Kealakekua Bay. The state says the master plan is needed to better manage park visitors and resources at both Na Po'opo and Ka'avaloa, which are located on either side of Kealakekua Bay. Some meeting goers objected to the format of the meeting. All the Ohana from this area, this is an insult to ours. Okay, how is it an insurance? The comments that were submitted in writing and during the meeting are on the website. While others took full advantage of the opportunity to get hands-on in shaping the plan. It's like 1,500 feet away. That's how many football fields? Five football fields. Ke'ala ke'kua. Ke'ala, the path. Ke'akua, a guide. The path of God. This is a very, very special and sacred place to the Hawaiian people. Uh, the state parks along with Bell Collins that he hired as a consultant, um, announced that they were moving forward with a master plan for Kealakekua Bay State Park, which st starts out from the point, Ka'avaloa Point, that's Ka'avaloa Village, that's over there by the monument. You can see the Fairwinds in. You have Umi's Well, where the land and the cliff meet, which is the location of the largest freshwater outflow on the entire west coast of the island of, the, um, island of Hawaii. This is Pali Kapu Okea. The state park goes up onto the, the ridge and goes back behind this as well. Back in 1985, there was an advisory um, committee that was put together. They had a series of 24 meetings and they came up with a report. That report you can access at Belt Collins backslash Kealakekua. If you want to see what the plans um, that have been made, as well as the alternatives that are now uh, being proposed. There's also um, a, a report, a conceptual plan, that was done in 1997. Now, for some reason, in this very difficult financial times, when we've got teacher furloughs and government services being cut like crazy, somehow there's money for Belt Collins to once again do a plan with this park and a master plan. And in addition to that, they're gonna be following it up with an environmental impact statement. Um, so it's very clear that there are plans to be moving forward here. The reason that we're concerned in the community is because the last two meetings that, that Bell Collins and State Parks have had up at Konawana Elementary School, the information that was presented was not given to us online uh, pr prior to the meeting, so we were at first introduced to um, the uh, plans and ideas at that meeting and then we're only given like 15 minutes to a half hour to comment on it, to digest it all and comment on it. And um, there was no public dialogue encouraged. There were no verbal questions that were encouraged. It was very straightforward firm, uh, format. Um, this is the way it's gonna be. And uh, numerous community members complained about that at the first meeting totally was ignored in the second meeting, our concerns, and so we had the same concerns. The community as a whole needs to be included in the process and empowered. Um, it can't be a top-down kind of decision. It has to come, these kinds of decisions have got to come from the descendants of this land, um, from those who um, are fortunate enough to be able to be here and come here and, and, and be a part of Kealakekua. There's got to be um, a lot more public education and a lot more uh, transparency about what is, what is really going on here with these plans. What we're trying to do now is um, looking at forming, reforming what was Keep Kealaki Cool Wild back in 2000. Back in 2000, there was a project that was proposed on the uh, other side of the Pali, a luxury golf course development with um, uh, golf course, members lodge, uh, one acre uh, lots, gated, exclusive uh, resort, and the community came together, formed Keep Kealakekua Wild, um, opposed to that project, and it, 
went to the Land Use Commission and asked for a declaratory ruling that it was an illegal use of agricultural land. The Land Use Commission agreed with us. It then went to the circuit, Third Circuit Court. The Third Circuit Court also agreed that it was an illegal use of agricultural land. Several other people in the community are trying to revive the Keep Calicacua Wild um, organization or movement because it's really important that the community be the uh, means by which decisions and plans are made for this place, especially those pe people who have a legal right to make those decisions. And quite frankly, I don't think that the state parks or Belt Cons has a legal right to make the, the kinds of decisions that they're making for this place. What's really remarkable is that while we have this master plan for Kealakekua Bay State Park, as far as Kealakekua Bay itself, there has been a stewardship plan that was put together that Department of Land and Natural Resources, uh, Division of Aquatic Resources within that, within DLNR. There was another whole process about stewardship, not just of the bay, but of the entire watershed, including going down south, several ahupua'a. So the stewardship plan was created through, you know, a, a, a lot of resources were used, and yet here we have a completely separate master plan for the state park, as if it's somehow not connected to all of that. And that's just wrong thinking. And plus it's wasteful. It's wasteful. Instead of having one stewardship master plan that's community-based, you've got all these other several different um, plans and, and activities that are being done and consultants being paid and taxpayer money being just thrown out the door, quite frankly. And the community resources that are available um, that and the knowledge that the incredible amount of knowledge that's contained within the community is pretty much being ignored. And that's just wrong thinking and it's just not the way things should be happening here. It's not Pono. I think in the end um, it's going to be about Ho'opono Pono, about making things right. And um, I think it's the community that's going to have to come together and go through that process working with our government. It is we the people. It just sometimes doesn't feel like it's our government. In times such as this, where you have a state agency working with a consultant that is directing, you know, how every five minutes of a meeting occurs with that, and discouraging, you know, questions, that process is not formal. And so how to get from that process to including the community is going to be having to be coming together, uh, making things right.